So let's move on to the main chunk of the show. The main chunk of the show. I want to watch Louis Vuitton men's full 2024 show. Um, that's you know by the creative director Pharrell Williams. The show opens up at the back of the model, walking for the backstage. Constant theme into the runway, I guess. So what is that? The whole team at Louis Vuitton behind this, the backstage, or is this people from the show? It's an overflow, so they got people to stand. That's pretty cool. If that's just, if that's the case, if this is kind of the overflow and they got people to stand backstage, that's cool. If this is just the people that work behind the scenes at Louis Vuitton having to like you know stand around as props and shit, that's a bit annoying. Do you know what I mean you're working a fucking 15 hour shift and then the next thing they want you to do is to stand there and pretend to be fucking what f fashion fans like you probably want to go home you probably want to take off your boots put on your crocs you know what I mean like have a fucking campari or something and sleep yeah uh, and again big up the stream chat thank you for joining me by the way sorry i didn't acknowledge you thank you for the stream chat for joining me I appreciate all of you there if you're watching the show live and you're enjoying what you see make sure you like the stream but big up the stream chat big up valley yoga tom fabe uh, matthew maloney i see you there um bun on rugs half moon bardo big up all of your guys smash your fucking chest let's fucking go okay walks out to the runway mirrored walls Aesthetic wise, it's very Virgil coded, isn't it? I, I know, you know, Virgil was obviously not the first person to do fucking elaborate set designs, but in terms of what it looks like, this looks like something Virgil could have done, right? In terms of the set design, like they come out, you know, of this mirrored fucking doorway or something. You've got this guy that looks like he might be, um, how do you, what's the politically correct way to call him? Is it native? Is it American Indian? I'm not sure what the correct word is, but you've got someone that comes out looking like that um, or from that kind of background um, wearing these amazing earrings, the hair parted the way it is, the nice jacket, the jeans. So it kind of, you know, it kind of reminds me of something that Virgil would have done. There's a lot of stories tied into this, a lot of motifs, a lot of themes. <laughs> Okay, nice white jacket. Oh, I, I, I think. Oh, I love this. This reminds me a little bit of um, what's that show? What's that show? Yeah, nineteen eight. Is it 19, 1984, 1914? No, sorry. Yellowstone has a prequel. Sorry, there's a Yellowstone prequel. I think it's like eighteen eighty three. And in that Yellowstone prequel, I didn't know this was a thing, but I guess back in those days, in around eighteen hundreds, um, there was a big uh, there was a. There were people from, I guess, the Catholic Church trying to convert Native Americans into, I guess, being ca Catholic. And it turned into like having these fucking all girls schools and all the girls from the Native American communities would be forced to go there. And basically they'd be treated kind of like slaves a little bit, but it'd also be um, put through these schools where they'd kind of be quote unquote westernized, Americanized. Um, they'd strip them of their of their identity. They'd rid them of their language. They couldn't speak their, 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 their language. They had to only speak English they'd get abused physically mentally all this sort of stuff and if i'm not mistaken they had these pat they had these these squares in the show 1883 these kind of red clay i don't know what they were though i don't know if they were like a farming thing if that was a weird punishment thing i don't know what it was but i do remember the scene in 1883 where there's a re really rebellious girl in the show and she's almost like digging in the i think mean, i don't know if they're like sand pits or something but that's what it's kind of reminding me of a little bit That's a nice coat, actually. The coat's really nice, I'm not gonna lie. I like that coat. I'm kind of... I'm kind of bored of that bag already, though, by the way. Is it a keep Keppel? Whatever that bag is, I'm kind of bored of it. I don't know about that look, though. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't know about that look at all. Look number three with a cowboy hat and the jeans and a... That looks a little bit shit. I'm not going to lie. That's kind of looking Philip Pliny. That is, it's almost looking Philip Pliny, isn't it? A little bit. It's only, we're only three looks in and it's looking a bit Philip Pliny. Okay, that's not, yeah, that's okay, but still. There's a jacket here. Look, look number four. It's got embroidery on the denim jacket. These nice, I guess, olive, olive type pants. Um, again with the accessories I don't know I don't know man I'm not feeling this yet already
That's decent. That's decent. Um, well, he's wearing the jeans that you'd wear if you're, I guess, horseback riding. I guess it's got an extra little part on the outside, which is, I guess, meant to help you so your legs don't rub or your jeans don't get ripped and shit. I quite like that with the really big um, buckle, belt buckle that cowboys would wear and, an, and a Western shirt with the fucking, um, you know, with the, what's that thing called? Um, with that, tie, I don't know what that tie particularly is called. Maybe it's a rope tie. I don't know what the name of it is. It reminds me of the thing that that guy from KFC wears. <laughs> the bag is, uh. It's just something about this Western thing. Like it's, it almost, it's difficult to wear Western inspired clothes, right? Cause cowboy inspired, cause it, it kind of looks sometimes a little bit too like, like you're playing dress up. That's why I think people that live in like Austin and whatever it may be, and people that are into country music, they have to do it kind of very subtly. You have to wear a hat and just maybe the boots, but you can't go too overboard because you end up looking like you're going to a Halloween party or something, right? You have to kind of, it's a fine line between looking like you're going to a Halloween party and being mistaken for somebody that might be from Dallas or Austin or something. There's something about it, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm calling it. I'm calling it already. I'm only like six or, or ten looks in. I'm calling it. This is fucking terrible. I'm calling it already. This is absolutely garbage. I'm calling it. This is not good. This is not good in the slightest. I'm not liking this at all. Who would have thought it, eh? Who would have thought it? Pharrell Williams, a guy that hasn't designed anything ever, really, full collection-wise, gets given the keys to Louis Vuitton men's and puts out a collection that's incredibly yawny incredibly forgetful incredibly like re just redundant and unimaginative and basic you know who would have thought it that who would have thought it the guy that you know can barely design streetwear clothes is having a difficulty putting together a full fashion collection who would have guessed it hey eh? who would have guessed it the bags are okay i guess double-breasted jacket again like I've I've seen that look a million times. Double breasted suit jacket with that almost kilt thing with the I've seen that silhouette, that look a million times. If you're seeing look at what JW Anderson did the other day at Milan Fashion Week. Look at what fucking um Prada did the other day at Milan Fashion Week. Like you gotta like these are the levels, bro. You gotta bring something else to the game. SS Daily the other day, like come on, bro. This isn't good enough. Especially for the opening day of Paris Fashion Week. This is what we we open with. This is one of the biggest show we open with, and we got this. We got fucking double-breasted jackets with kilts and big tr like and big trousers. Like, come on, bro! It's twenty twenty-four. Come with something fresh, bro. This is basically a this is basically spring twenty twenty-five, right? Because that's by the time those things come into the stores or by the time people wear them, they'll be wearing them in fucking twenty twenty-five. Like, you have to be ahead of the game, bro. This is too old. There's like a mustard suit here. Yeah, this is so shit. It's kind of like, maybe because of the Timberland boots, you know what it's kind of reminding me of? It's kind of reminding me of like a Nigerian cowboy. That's what I'm getting. I'm getting Nigerian Bible Belt cowboy. Does that make any sense? I'm getting like, I'm getting like, you know, Lagos, ex, you know, um, Lagos born Dallas living, you know? That's what it's giving. It's giving one of those. Imagine if Hush Puppy, right? Imagine, remember that scammer, Hush Puppy? Imagine if Hush Puppy, like, grew up in fucking Texas. That's what I imagine he'd be wearing as he's driving down the street in his fucking Rolls Royce Phantom in purple with a cowboy hat and, I don't know, an outfit that looks like he could be the leader of some church somewhere. It's very scammy, but you, you're, sc you're not scamming bank cards, you're scamming horses. Come on, man. What the fuck is that? What's that girl wearing, bro? What is this shit? What is this shit? What is this? Isabel Marant Cowboys. She's got this horrible... Oh, man. They did her so dirty. They did her so fucking dirty. What the fuck is this? What is that? Cowboy boots with the jeans tucked in. and She's way too pretty to be... Like, they, they did her dirty, bro. They did this girl fucking dirty. She's got the hair flowing... Looks like she's in a music video, but look at that! Look at that outfit. What are these fri What are these little frilly bits? Like, what is going on here? The jeans don't even look like they fit properly. Look like they're a bit too big. 
Yo. Throw it all in a bin. Garbage, garbage. Yeah, this is all shit. This is fucking terrible. See that guy's face? That's me. Look at that guy's face in the front row. Look at that guy's face on the front row. That's me. That's me there. That is me. That's my face. See that guy in the front row? That white dude there? Maybe owns a boutique somewhere in fucking St. Petersburg? That's my face. Like, what the fuck is that? He's probably a buyer thinking to himself, how the fuck am I meant to select for this? Who's going to buy this shit? He's probably a buyer thinking, oh my bloody God. I've got to spend, I've got to spend five mil on this. <laughs> I've got a fucking budget to spend. There's nothing here. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Look at him. Oh my God. Is that Peso Pluma at the front there? Is that Peso Plomo? Am I mistaken? Is that my guy Peso Plomo? Or is that somebody else? Is that Peso Plomo? I think that's Peso Plomo. I think so. Big up Peso Plomo. Oh, come on, man. What the fuck is that? Look at how terrible that is. What lemon look that is. Oh my God, bro. Oh my God. This is giving, what's that show I've been watching? You know what it looks like? It looks like the fucking wardrobe from fucking Fargo. Is it Fargo season? Whatever Fargo season is now at the moment, it's set in like, you know, it's set in a, uh, wherever it's set in. But one of the guys involved in it, um, John Hamm, the guy from fucking Mad Men, he plays a guy that's like, a, he owns a ranch and shit. And he, this is what he'll be wearing. This is giving John Hamm in Fargo. Fucking hell. Hey, yo, big up, big up, big up Uche. Morning, big up Uche. And big up Megan Klobcha. Oh, maybe I'm early enough. You will see my comment. I'm dying to know if you saw Chris go on that sex podcast. It's so insane, especially after claiming sex addict needed rehab. Um, No, I haven't seen it yet. I think it's with a girl, isn't it, right? Is it with a girl? I forgot. I, I saw a picture. I saw a thumbnail, but I never check it out. You know what? I don't know. When it comes to Chris DeLeo content, it's kind of hard for me to get through it. I'm not going to lie. The guys are legit. Like, I've realized recently as much as i as much as i say i like psychos and i like i like to watch destructive behavior and i get a kick out of seeing people spiral and crash out deep down i'm a pussy people that are really crazy and people that have real dark sides i kind of stay away from them i don't really want to talk about them or watch their content you know i'm a bit of a pussy that way i'm not gonna lie i think i spoke about it before on the pod i'm like oh yeah i like psychos i like to see people crash out i like weird shit mm. but really when i when when actual dark because crystalia is dark he's got some darkness about him when he's around and when there's content about him on i don't want to watch or see it because you know that guy's got up to some real dark shady evil shit and i just don't want to be you know exposed to it you know I'm a little bit superstitious in that way. I don't want to be exposed to his dark, evil shit. Um, you know, I don't want to get any of that fucking diddler energy on me. So more power to that girl for talking about sex to Crystalia, right? For being on a pod with him while he gets his fucking dick hard. But that's not for me. That is not for me. No more diddler, no more pedo thing, unless I have to. Yeah, I, I don't like this at all. Controversial opinion. Controversial opinion. I absolutely hate brown on black people. I know black people love it, but I absolutely detest when we, when, when uh, uh, the color brown on us. I detest it. I think it looks terrible. Obviously, there's, a, there's the tendency for it to look like you're naked from afar, right? Depending on your skin tone, it could ple it could look like you're naked from far away. But I just don't like it. I guess it just mute like I think if you're dark like myself and like this model, I think it's nicer to have like brighter colours to kind of pop off your skin, right? The whites, the fucking reds, anything anything neon, right? Just to kind of make your skin pop. Especially if you put on certain fucking moisturizers and shit. You can look like you're fucking glistening. Glistening. Literally, you could look like you bloody took a fucking bath in a tub of olive oil. It could be absolutely fantastic. But I think brown, if anything, it mutes us. 
it kind of dumbs our star. It kind of makes us look a little bit ordinary. It kind of makes you kind of blend into the fucking background. I don't like it. I hate brown on black people. I fucking hate it. I don't own a single piece of clothing that's brown in my wardrobe. I think I used to actually have a Supreme t-shirt, actually. I had a really cool Supreme t-shirt that I ended up selling because it's just, I just didn't like how it looked on me. When I'd be walking down the street, I'd be thinking like I'm fucking walking down the street topless. And the only times I'm topless is when I go to fucking techno parties. I'm not going to fucking just be walking down the street topless with a brown shirt on. So I don't like brown So and I don't like this. I'm not going to lie. Even though the model's abs... Oh, that's a fucking walk, isn't it? Look at that walk. That is a walk and a half. God damn. That's a walk, isn't it? Look at that. Strut, 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 strut. Oh, look at that. Look how horrible the outfit is. Look how badly it fits him. Look at the shoulders. I, I didn't even study fashion design. Honestly, I'm just a dumbass. I'm just a fucking dumbass from from middle of nowhere fucking london right chatting out my asshole through a webcam and even i can tell that that fucking overcoat that whatever i don't know if it's called a pea coat or whatever fucking style of jacket that is even i can tell that's been cut to shit look how terrible that falls on his shoulders look at how far the seam is away from his actual shoulder you might as well make that a wrangland sleeve if you're gonna have the seam fall that low it might as well be near his fucking elbow look at that look at that crease there that is terrible. That was like a jacket that he bought from a vintage shop in fucking Kreuzberg. What is that, bro? That is so bad. And this is a model in fucking prime shape, right? He's fucking probably 170 pounds, six foot two, ha super handsome. And look how terrible this fucking jacket looks on him. Yikes. Yeah, count me out. Count me out, man. Count me out. This is giving fucking, you know, this is giving one of those, you know, this is giving a, you know, choir leader in a Western who's also been accused of maybe diddling the kids. This looks like it. I don't know. This is, this is giving like, you know, sit on my lap. I don't like this at all. I'm going to have to stop this and watch it and just see the clips. Come on, man. What is that? There's a camo jacket. Is that camouflage? With a with a hat with a scarf. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna check out the clips now. I'm not gonna watch this video anymore. This is pissing me off. With what what are those aviators? Aviators, and there's a hand. There's a there's a scarf. I guess around the neck, with what looks like a camo jacket. I don't know if in westerns or if that era they were wearing camo. I don't know. Like. <laughs> <laughs> this is all over the place this is all over the place anyway i'm just gonna check out the actual vogue runway pictures now because i can't be bothered with the actual show itself watching it all is fucking driving me crazy so i'm actually gonna head over to vogue runway right now and see the actual pictures themselves look at the blurb that's how i know the show is shit when they write this much text right who's this who's the reviewer the reviewer is Luke Lech, Luke Leach, how do you pronounce his name? Luke, Luke Leach, Leach, right? Look at the review. Look at how many paragraphs there are in this review. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's probably loads of waffle and payola in here. Like, that's how you know the show shit. When you have to write all this fucking backstory shit. Pharrell was actually inspired by his wife's new hobby of buying ponies. And when he went to visit them, it's like, fuck off. We don't care. Are the clothes good? Yes or no? That's what we want to know. You know what I mean? But again, what do I know? I'm just some fucking idiot here talking out my absolute ass. But let's see what the collection looks like via the Rogue, Vogue sorry, runway pictures. Okay, cool. Let's actually go back to the top here. So, look number... Look number one might be my favorite. That opening look is really strong, I feel like. That long coat with the tassels at the bottom, um, what looks like silver boots, the color of the jeans, the model looks fucking fantastic. The, I, I, don't, like, I don't know if, they, if that's jasmine. I don't know what that color is. I forgot. It's, I don't know what the, what the actual... Um, is it, I don't know what the... It's like a turquoise color. And I think a lot of Native Americans like to wear that sort of jewelry. That looks amazing. It matches the buttons on his shirt, which is cut a bit short. Like, that looks fucking great. That's my favorite look, I think, in the whole collection. That look number one. Um, look number two and three, you can pass that. Because, um, again, I'm thinking of that. I think... I think... Uh, is it D-squared? D-squared do it much better than this. I swear to God. Um, again, all the looks from looks four to six, I don't like looks seven to nine absolutely terrible 
look, A, I feel like Virgil did this like before he passed like a million times. This entire look with the double-breasted jacket and the kilts and the trousers and even the slits on the side of the trousers. It feels very Virgil coded. So I don't know if this is a leftover design that Pharrell just kind of, you know, reappropriate. Maybe this is what, maybe this is sustainability. When people in fashion talk about sustainability, maybe this is what it is. You just see a, an old look on the fucking note on the board, right? When you're fucking doing your shows or you go through old sketchbooks and you find a look, you're like, you know what? Let's just redo that. That's sustainability in fashion. Let's just redo what the previous creative director did, but in my own colorway. <laughs> um, look, 10 to 12's terrible. Look, 10, look, 12 might be one of the worst looks ever. That wouldn't look out of place at fucking, you know, at fucking Paul and Bear or something. That is one of the worst things I've ever seen. The cut on that jacket is terrible. The jeans, the boots, everything about it is shit. You don't need a bag. Again, there's an, I think he's overdoing the bag thing. Maybe the bags are one of the biggest sellers. And I think Louis Vuitton, I think if I'm not mistaken, they sell a lot more accessories than they do ready to wear. But the bags, they're, they're kind of ODing on the bags a little bit. They need to chill out with the whole bag thing. Um, it's not that deep. Um, we move on again here. I don't like the fucking ever looks. Look 13 to 15, I don't like. Um, although this model is absolutely mesmerizing. Whatever her name is here, look number 14. She looks absolutely gorgeous. But the outfit, garbage. I hate brown on black people. I detest it. I don't think it looks great. I think we deserve pop. We deserve color. But I know nowadays, brown has become... Brown is a bit of an invo colorway, I feel like now. Maybe because of the whole like um you know the whole like y2k era sort of trend coming back in a lot of those video vixens and models from back in the day were wearing a lot of brown shiny black skin you know whatever it may be but i don't particularly like it but i think she looks absolutely fantastic whoever she is take a bow um looks what's that looks 16 to 18 18 is quite cool i like 18 the model looks great um it's good to see older models down the, on the runway um i like that i don't know if it's mink or fur or maybe it's faux fur that's fucking incredible I hope it's actually real. Pharrell needs some controversy. He needs some edge. I hope that's actually something taken off of a fucking, off the carcass of a fucking ball or something, whatever it may be. I hope that fur is real. And I hope that bag, that croc type of bag is also real. Like we need to return back to, you know, um, fucking killing and skinning, you know, animals for our fucking fashion pleasure. That's what we need to get back to. Let's forget all that faux stuff. Like, allow it. Like, give me... If I'm going to spend money on this designer shit, I want to know that some fucking hunter somewhere in the depths of fucking South Africa, you know, some probably Dutch woman has shot a fucking camel or a giraffe for the sake of my belt. I would want that. Look at this. Look at this fucking LARPing workwear shit. This is like, I guess, like a Dickies jacket or like a Carhartt jacket. And the person's... The person's... The model is carting the trunk, the Louis Vuitton trunk down the runway on top of a dolly or whatever that thing is called, right? A little with wheels on it. But I'm wondering, in that era, in the West, in West, in that era where this is based, the West, you know, with cowboy era, did they have carts with wheels like that, with rubber wheels? Was that a thing? <laughs> this is like, this reminds me of that movie. What was that movie um, by Sofia Capallo um, where she unfortunately had a pair of Converse in it? Or that episodes of fucking Game of Thrones where they incorrect, where they mistakenly left the Starbucks cup on the table. Like how, 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 it's like having a drone during the cowboy, like what? There were drones where cowboys and Indians were, right? Okay, cool. Whatever you say, bro. Um, looks 22 to 24. I don't fucking like. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is so terrible. It's, I feel like he did this look, look 23 already in a previous collection. This denim look with the fucking monogram print don't get me wrong it's quite cool but i feel like this has been done already this particular look i feel like i've seen it already before but maybe i'm bugging them now i'm confused um wow look number 26 is that what a mess there's so much going on there and none of it is good wow again does every model walking down the runway have a bag in their hand yeah, they have OD'd on the bags, isn't it? Look at that. Every single model that's walked this runway is holding a bag in their hand. That's how you know, like, he's... Yeah, that's how you know Pharrell's definitely a very malleable yes person. That's why probably he got hired. If they ask him, hey, we need more bags, he's going to put more bags in there. Hey, we need more sunglasses. More sunglasses get put in there. He's going to do whatever they say, you know, within, you know, just to basically keep everybody happy. Because that's the thing about Pharrell. He's basically the, the older version of Travis Scott. Very inoffensive... 
um, but also he's associated with hip hop, but he's one of the safest options. If you want like the black hip hop kind of market, um, but you don't want any of the fucking guns, you don't want any of the gang culture, you don't want any of the twerking, any of the obscene displays of wealth, the drug culture, you go to Travis Scott and you go to Pharrell Williams. Those are the two safest options. And God, look, every model has a fucking bag. Yo, they OD'd on the fucking bags, bro. Enough, man. I'm bored. Give us a new shape. Again, with the fucking same fucking bag shape again. Like, look at these designs. Oh, my God, bro. Are those double knee pants made in, like, normal... Like, what is that? What is that jacket, even? What is that bomber? What is all of this? Yo, this is a all... Okay, look number 2032 is... Oh, my God. That digi camo again. You did it again. That fucking digi camo thing. Look, 3031. Come on, bro. Again. Again. Yo, he's he's recycling old Virgil looks. And he's already... He's only three, what? Two collections or three collections in. And he's already referencing himself. <laughs> he's referencing himself. And he's only two or three collections in. Are you silly? Again, with this... With the carts and the trunks... It's funny because most likely that style of jacket was invented before this cart with the wheels was. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? It's like they're all they were all invented at different points in time. I bet you. They were all invented at different points in time. Probably across like a 60 year time range or something, maybe even more. Like from the workwear jacket to the to the trunks to the fucking cart with the wheels on it. Like absolutely crazy. That jacket is fairly nice. That varsity jacket, not too shabby. That chore style jacket with the monogram print is okay. Um, again, that like honestly, D squared. When D squared does cowboy, it's almost done in a very queer, super gay way, but it's incredibly chic, incredibly slick, incredibly wearable. This stuff legitimately feels like fancy dress, or it feels like something you would see at Beyond Retro. That's what it feels like. You know, like when you go to Beyond Retro and there's like a Western theme and someone will style like, you know, there's usually someone that works at Beyond Retro that's maybe like a, you know, um, uh, a frustrated stylist that probably has never made it. And they, you know, they go crazy on the fucking mannequins and they just try some shit out, right? Because why not? It's fucking retail. And it's a bit mad. This is what it looks like a little bit. This reminds me of a mannequin you see at fucking Beyond Retro or at Rocket or something. You know what I mean? Like this is, oh my God, look at Pusha T. Look how awful that is, bro. Pusha T out here looking like a stud. Pusha T out here looking like a like a stud mechanic. What is that? Yo, that is got one of the worst looks I've seen in this collection. Pusha T deserves better than that. Again, the Digicamo suit. Oh my god, terrible. That jacket. Okay, this might be one of the best looks actually. Look number forty two. But I'll get. I, I don't know if it's partly because of the model. I'm not sure if it's the model selling it. Oh, is that um, is that one of Shannon Sharp's kids? Look number forty-one. Is that one of Shannon Sharp's sons, or is that, or, is, or am I just thinking of another black person? Does it, why does he look familiar to me? Look number forty-one. It looks like it could be Shannon Sharp's kid. I don't know, but yeah, this this model look number forty-two might be one of my favorite ones. Um, I think this jacket is called like a. Is it like a motorcycle or is it like a motorcycle jacket or a driver's jacket? I don't know. Let me see if I can find. Is it a driver's jacket? I don't think it's a driver's jacket. Is it a driver's jacket? It's almost that collar. I don't know what that collar is called. Is it a driver's jacket? Or is it a moto jacket? I'm not too sure. Because I remember I had one before from Dr. Martin's that was waxed with that sort of collar. Okay, it's not a dry. Is it a dry? Yeah, that's it. It's there we go. Whatever style that jacket is, that's what it's called, right? Is it a driver's jacket? What's the actual model of it called here? I'm curious. Uh, driver San Francisco. Yeah, so it's kind of a driver's jacket, I guess. It's kind of got that kind of, whatever that collar is, where it's got like one button snap on it. That's quite nice. I think that might be one of my favorite looks. That brown look there with the pants. But again, it could be part of the, it, it could be partly due to the model. The model looks pretty cool and he's making it look great. Oh my God, look how bad that is. Look, going from one good look to a bad one. That cardigan with those double knee pants, miss. That oh, that looks good. I like the boots. Those boots are fucking hard. I think that might be Timberland collection. That those are actually quite nice. He made like a a Timberland's boot that's almost similar to a Red Wing. Oh no, that's Shannon Sharp's kid, isn't it? There we go. That's Shannon Sharp's kid. This kid here. Um, 
the quarterback, I think. Those boots are really nice. I think they're Timberland collaboration. They look like Red Wings. Red Wings have a particular model that looks the same as this. So I quite like those. Um, the end of the show is, it kind of improves at the end. Towards the end, it kind of improves. That, yeah, I'm not, I don't know. Yeah, it kind of improves. I don't know. I'm scratch. I'm really clutching at straws here. Look number 46 is pretty good. Oh my God. They, they, they were wearing tracksuits in the Western there. <laughs> what the fuck is this? All of a sudden, it's gone to like Jeremy Scott. All of a sudden, we're like, we're playing like, what the fuck is this? Look number 47 is garbage. Look number 48 is really nice. I like the, I like the color of that yellow coat. That's really nice with the leather um, collar. That's awesome with the big front pockets. That's really nice. I like that, actually. I like that entire look. That looks really fucking good. I love this. It, oh, it's got double jacket, right? He's wearing the ja another jacket on the inside with that. Okay, cool. That looks good. Oh, my God. The rest of it looks terrible. I'm not too mad at that jacket, actually, from look number 50. That, oh, that, that long overcoat is actually pretty decent. Look number 49. Okay. So the end of the show is where it kind of improves. 52 is really good as well. Oh, I kind of, again, this looks, again, this looks very, very odd compared to the other, the rest of the collection. But I think look number 54 is super hard. Like I'd wear the fuck out of that outfit. Head to toe, I'd wear that. With these fucking um, flared, I think that's a flared leather pants with patches all over them. And then you've also got this biker jacket, um, motorcycle jacket, I'm assuming, with a cowboy hat. That actually looks really good. Somehow he's been able to make a motorcycle jacket with flared leather pants look Western. I don't know how. Maybe it's a leather pant. Maybe it's the flares. But I like how this doesn't look like, you know, your regular motorcycle jacket outfit. So I quite like look number 54. I'd wear the fuck out of that. Um, and the rest of it is a bit forgettable. I'm not going to lie. The rest of it is very, very forgettable. Very, very, very forgettable. Oh, I guess I don't know who that guy is, that model. He's back again on look number 50, 63. I quite, that top is quite nice, actually, with the big snap buttons on it. Oh, look number 62 is quite nice. The denim suit with those, whatever, is it jade? I think the color of that, of those pearl buttons. It's your girl and accessories. Oh, are those millionaires? Am I seeing millionaires there? Did Pharrell bring back the OG millionaires? I think those are OG millionaires. That's pretty cool. The Pharrell, the, Jack, the glasses that Pharrell made famous back in the day, he brought, he brought them back. Those, those are quite nice. But collection-wise, the clothing is so garbage. Okay, that jacket is banging. That jacket there. This, this might be one of the hardest jackets there. Look number 67. That jacket with the embroidery, with the uh, embroidery, the black leather bomber with the LV all over it, that almost looks like a Louis Vuitton Fug Club collaboration. That looks fucking hard. I'd wear the fuck out of that jacket. That is one of the best ones in there. It's probably going to be like 10 grand, but that's really nice. And the rest of it, I don't really care for, to be honest. The rest of it is fucking shit. How many looks is there? Look, how many, how much garbage is here? Is it 100? Okay, there we go. And then Pharrell comes out at the end. Honestly, enough with the P signs, bro. Give us good collections. Pick up a pencil. Do something, bro. Enough with the P signs. Enough. Just this, oh yeah, this is garbage. Um, let's actually see the glasses. Yeah, are they OG millionaires? Let me actually see if the millionaires are here. Because I would love to see if that's actually true. If it's OG mil Okay, the cowboy boots are weird, isn't it? Cowboy boots without the obvious heel. They've almost been sunken in there. That's pretty interesting look there. You got leather cowboy hats. I'm not really down for. Oh, I love the earrings. Those earrings are beautiful. I'd wear the fuck out of those. Those blue Tiffany earrings with, I think it's like a gold, is that like a gold rim? That's, those are quite nice. I really fucking like those. Um, the jeans and the bags, not too much. Let me see the glasses. I just want to see the glasses. Yeah, they are. There they are. That's the OG millionaires. Those are the original. Um, original Louis Vuitton millionaires. Those are the original ones. Okay, he brought them back. He actually brought back the OG millionaires, not the update versions because Virgil, Virgil re remade the millionaires like these, as you can see on the screen. But the OG versions were a bit flatter. The ones that Pharrell and Nigo made famous. There they are, right? Pharrell Williams and there, see? The, that, that version there that he's wearing on the left. Those are the ones that he made famous, actually. Let's copy that image so you can see it properly. So that one, those are the ones that he made famous there. And I think that's the same version than what we have here, courtesy of Vogue Runway, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's the same one. That's pretty cool. I like the fuck out of that. That's pretty fucking cool. I'm not mad at that in the slightest. So that's about it. But the rest of it, 
is fucking like look at look look how gorgeous this model is. Look what look what they made her wear. Look what they made her wear. The jeans don't even fit properly. Look at the crease. Look at the look at that. The jeans don't fit properly. Look at the creases here. She could fit a whole other person in the front of her jeans. Fucking hell. Yeah. Again, not that impressed. Um, Pharrell's really been lacking, I feel like, when it comes to his collections lately. Looking back at some of the previous ones here on the Vogue Runway site, um, so far, he's had one good collection, his debut for Louis Vuitton menswear. Apart from that, it's been one mediocre collection after another. Um, and I'm of the feeling that most likely he's going to end up getting booted. I don't think it's going to last. I don't think he's going to be at Louis Vuitton for long because this stuff is not good. It's not good in the slightest. Um, again, I could be over whooping, but I don't think I am. I think it's really, really fucking bad because that's the first one, right? The first collection was 2024. Pre-4 2024 was terrible. And then 4 2024 was not that great either. So I'm not really too sure where he's going with this so far. But for me, it hasn't been great. I'm not going to lie. It fucking hasn't been great. Um, let me actually read a bit of the review here, courtesy of Luke Leach. Let's see what this reviewer said. Let's see if he's absolutely sucking off Pharrell or if he's telling the truth. Um, the day after Pharrell Williams' first rodeo for Louis Vuitton, the studio leads um, he leads began to work on his collection. Now that you can begin to join the dots, it appears that he's taking the house on a something of an odyssey. The four LV trunks will down the runway tonight. Strongly suggest he's still en route to somewhere. <laughs> That's a nice way of saying that you don't know what's going on. <laughs> That's a politically correct way of saying I have no idea what he's doing or where he's going. He's still en route for somewhere, but for fall 2024, he's Louis Vuitton um, uh, moved into what was home territory for Williams, the US, and the heritage of the Western. Speaking of the press, speaking to the press sorry, during a post show, Howdy, he said, When you see cowboys portrayed, you only see a few versions. You never see, um, you never get to see what some of those original cowboys look like. They look like us. <laughs> Multicultural cowboys, it's fucking crazy multicultural cowboys is fucking crazy diversity cowboys is insane imagine trying to make a political statement by trying to rewrite history <laughs> actually there was actually really you know it's like what like we know what that era was like bro like we were getting lynched you know what i mean us and the uh, us and the the actual natives that were actually there that got fucking displaced right quote unquote they were getting lynched so are we like come on bro they had us on fucking they had us fucking you know wheeling around carts they had us on fucking chains like we know what that history was like we weren't fucking bandits you know doing what we wanted do you know what i mean like <laughs> what <laughs> um they look like us they look like us they look like me they look like black they look like native american honestly for us so full of shit <laughs> what the fuck is this bro man's trying to rewrite history what next is he gonna do a fucking is he gonna do an ancient egypt collection next I, I, honestly if he does this if he does next collection and he sets it in fucking cairo and he has all these black models walking down the street and, and walking down the runway and like yeah you actually know that tutun Kamun was actually a black guy tutun Kamun's name was actually tyrone it's like what <laughs> it continues native people of what became the united states were respected and represented in tonight's telling via participation and acknowledgement the house said that the artists from the dakota and lakota tribes contributed to the accessories these include hand paintings and beautiful desert flowers embroideries the opening and closing music was composed by Williams and Lakota Hoki Claremont and performed by a group of Native Americans, Voices of Resistance. Man got a Native American choir. Like, come on, bro. This guy, bro. This guy. Performative virtue signaling nonsense. Amongst the models was Lakota musician Gunner Jules, big up Gunner Jules, who carried a painted keeper above his hand, above his hand tooled God Goodyear welted boots, um, jeans, and LV cowboy buckles. Still, though, American history was fraught, frighted, and subject to fiery debate in the battleground of contemporary cultural identity. Not really. It's not. It's not fraught. It it is what it is. It's un. It's it's. It's not appealing. It's not great to look back at, especially some of the accounts you read them. But I think confronting history as is, is a far better way than just trying to retell it through a modern lens. Like history is what it is. Let's learn through it. Let's do better. But like trying to rewrite history to sort of like 
you know, make you feel better or make you feel warm and fuzzy because nowadays the things that they got away with back then could never run now is really doing a disservice to the experience that those people went through back in the day, to be honest. Um, this year, Louis Vuitton founded its startup workshop by Place of Ven... What's that? Vendome, 18, 18, 1854, was also the year of the occult massacre, of the actual massacre. I think that's what it calls. The first um, Seacoat War and capture and re-enslavement of the Anthony Burns in Virginia. William said, so this is all political stuff, right? It's not just about, no wonder the clothes are shit. This is all political fucking hand wringing and shit, right? Cool. Get it. We're expressing ourselves from place of love. No judgment. Just think about telling our sto your story and telling your people's story as best as you can and doing it candidly with love. That's of Yeah, but you can do the story with love without trying to rewrite history without trying to make people feel warm and fuzzy. There's a way to celebrate Native American culture through the lens of the Western, you know, through Westerns by actually celebrating them and not trying to, oh, they were actually black cowboys. And like, what does that do? Like, huh? The storytelling achieved in the, by the studio and the artisan teams of the house, though the execution of the craft under Williams' direction was often outstanding. Lace shirts were embroidered with lasso throwing cowboys and denim jackets with yellow desert flowers. Chaps in leather and denim, possibly the first. <laughs> Look at you trying to celebrate denim leather chaps. It's fucking insane. This is payola, isn't it? Come on, Luke. You're, you're trying to clap because he made the leather chaps. Louis Vuitton leather chaps. This is what we've been missing, yeah? We're missing Louis Vuitton leather chaps. Fuck off. Suiting including the collars, collarless pont neuf jacket um, that is becoming an L uh, Williams LV emblem and denim were riveted with turquoise, which is also toured into belts, collar tips and bulos and jewelry and bags. Yeah, that turquoise, those turquoise bits of jewelry, I fucking love. The first rodeo, um, damouflage. The first rodeo is damo. Is that what it's called? It's called damouflage. Was reinterpreted into <laughs> imagine oh reinterpreted the pixelated camouflage cow flowers um with the printed calfskin trucker jackets and trunks there was also an amazing black bomber in silk and satins this was accessorized with black speedy 40 set with studs and fringing another bag and a compact doctor satchel in a dusty effect monogram was framed with a horseshoes at each side this pointed to the time span covered by the collection in terms of western dresses the generous section of workwear included a double fronted work pants riveted with turquoise again terrible there was also an apparent anomaly some of the kind of maybe glitch alongside a western cut turquoise bottom camel suit and how tall cowboy boots in to, in look two the model carried a strangely ergonomic bag <laughs> exactly strangely ergonomic eh strangely strangely modern bag set in a western backdrop cool digital digital nomads that's what they were digital cowboys that's what it is right digital native american cowboys fuck off the backstage look board um refer to this as a r project bag mysterious another um another left field inclusion was a turquoise and rhinestone set necklace inspired by the one They've got jewelry inspired by Queen Victoria. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. Fuck this, man. Terrible collection. Giving you a fucking what? A four out of ten. Maybe even less than that. Um, this is no way to start Paris Fashion Week. Pharrell's not going to last for a long time at, at Louis Vuitton. I don't think so. This is really garbage. And again, like, I'm not even a fashion designer, but imagine going to fashion school for fucking three years. Imagine doing a master's. Imagine coming out that master's and starting an internship for a brand that you love, but then you find out the founder or the owner of the brand is a fucking piece of shit and they're paying you 22 to 24,000 per year and you fucking live in Dawson or you live in somewhere nice like West London, somewhere nice like Brixton, somewhere nice like Labbrook Grove or whatever it may be. You're paying 2,000 rent per month, which is basically your whole paycheck, but you're working in fashion, so it's cool. You get free drinks, you get some pools and whatever it may be but the owner you work with is fucking horrible and works around the clock for 16 hours and then you kick back to watch a fashion week show you know as you're sat you know on one of your fucking trendy fucking sofas and guess what here you got pharrell trying this shit out imagine how angry you'd feel you've committed to fucking you gave away five of your five of your years away to education under the hope that you would somehow get a fashion job you come out of it you're working, you're interning for a brand where the owner's a fucking piece of shit, right? You don't actually get to do fashion shit. 
You just, you know, organizing models, ordering the fucking waters and shit, making sure there's beers in the fridge, or at worst, ordering your fucking founder a bag of fucking coke or whatever it may be every fucking Friday. You're not actually doing what you actually love to do. And then you see Pharrell pushing out this collection on the runway. That would drive me up the wall, mate. This is so garbage, so ordinary, so terrible. And yeah, just a, a waste of fucking fabric. This is, this is what the opposite of sustainability is. Just designing this shit. People used to complain a lot about Karl Lagerfeld's expansive 100 plus look collections for Chanel and whatever else he was designing for. I think I forgot at the time, right? They say, oh, this is a waste of fabric. No, this is a waste of fabric. What the fuck is this? Terrible, terrible, absolutely terrible.